Movies recap here for another video in the North Sea, the crew of the Kinloch Bravo oil rig are finally preparing to return home after months of hard work. Unfortunately, rig manager Magnus receives a call with bad news from the company. Helicopters have been repurposed to help with the power outage on the North Kilska platform, so they don't know when to pick up the Magnus crew. Magnus wants to know more, but the phone suddenly goes dead. There are communication problems all over the building. Kat and his wife's conversation breaks off, and even Fulmer can't get the main radio to work. Magnus called a meeting and announced that he would have to wait a while before returning home. That doesn't work for everyone, especially not Lars, who keeps asking for rational explanations. Suddenly, the entire building loses power and Fulmer finds all generators out of order. Battery backup keeps things going for now, and the pressure in the production module keeps building up, but when the pressure builds up, it can destroy all the modules. Fulmer tries to contact the rescue ship, but the radio still does not work, and other oil rigs nearby seem to be having the same problem. The entire facility begins to shake and production modules begin to catch fire, spinning out of control. Company representative Rose doesn't want to shut down the module just yet because it would be well over quota, but Magnus orders his men to shut down the module anyway for their lives. At that moment, the whole system starts shaking again. Everyone stares in shock as they notice a very thick, fast-moving fog covering the entire building. Some time later, Fulmer manages to restore power, but communications are still down, and the helicopters should not have arrived in this weather. Alwyn suspects that overdrilling caused the earthquake, but Rose, being a scientist, denies that. Magnus decides that restoring communications is a priority, so he sends Fulmer and Buzz to check the radio towers. Once at the top, Fulmer begins to check the car, but is frustrated when Buzz accuses him of betraying the team for having an affair with the company's Rose, not the company's. Baz quickly apologizes, and when Fulmer lets go of Baz, he goes out to pick up something and finds a dead seagull on the ground. Magnus and Lars wait at the base of the tower when they suddenly see Baz collapse. As Kat and Rose rush to the scene with a medical kit, Fulmer comes down and explains that Buzz was right behind him and doesn't know what happened. Lars doesn't believe Baz's story because he realizes that Baz's plate has been opened. Kat takes Bucks to the doctor's office to stabilize him, but since there is no operating room, there is nothing else he can do. Lars begins to lose his cool as the helicopter never arrives on time. Rose brings Magnus in front of the computer to show that the pipeline is not under pressure, meaning every rig in the area has the same problem as the pipeline. Some time later, Baz wakes up and begins to see visions of things falling apart in the ocean. Lars goes to Magnus' office and blames everything, but Magnus ignores his complaints and walks away. This allows Lars to peek into his desk and find a personal note from his company, which infuriates him. He summons everyone to the helideck and tells them that management lied to them from the beginning. Magnus also comes and sees that Lars has the note and is forced to confess that the company is going to scrap the entire field and that soon everyone will be out of work. The conversation was abruptly interrupted when something fell on them despite not being near a volcano. It was ash. Buzz also appears on the helideck and faints, saying, it's too late, it's already started. Later, Baz wakes up in the infirmary, explaining that he doesn't remember the accident or the heliport. At the tower he saw something in the fog and heard a noise in his head. Buzz reacts violently when Cat tries to take blood, yelling at them for not heeding a warning about a coming wave. After Cat manages to put him to sleep, she explains to Rose that somehow Buzz's wounds heal quickly on their own. After the women leave, Baz reveals he is still awake, and as he examines her injuries, he sees several glowing spurs working to close them. In the lounge, the crew noticed a light in the window. It is a waiting vessel trying to communicate, but going in the wrong direction. Alwyn sends Wreck out to pick up Morse code and discovers that the ship is calling for help. Magnus orders Fulmer to use the deck lights to signal him to find out what they know, then asks him to go to Chef March and start distributing food. Lars begins to go insane as he locks himself in his room with Easter guarding the door. When Buzz wakes up in the infirmary, most of his injuries have healed. Checking your own reflection, you begin to see visions of an oil rig being destroyed. He then fled into his room, put on his clothes, and began to writhe in pain as his mouth pushed out his gold teeth. Rose collects the ashes for analysis and orders everyone to stay indoors. Fulmer tells her and Magnus that her ship has no more information than them. They have no means of communication. So if you wait until morning, you may not be able to use the lights to guide the boat and the boat may crash. If you're going to evacuate, you should do it now, but Rose doesn't want to because it could get you into legal trouble for breach of contract, but Magnus puts everyone's safety first and slows down the rudder of the ship. I asked Fulmer to keep the lights on so I could do it. When Alwyn goes outside to get into Lex shift, he finds Buzz making strange circles in the window, and when he checks, his head is full of noise, and he shouldn't have survived the accident in this situation. Explain that it was not. The lights in the room begin to flash and Baz sees another strange vision before escaping. Lars begins repairing the window and manages to remove it from the wall and escape. Lex sneaks into the infirmary to steal rubbing alcohol and gets drunk and tries to take a shower. At that moment, his body begins to ache, and as Lex throws up blood, the ink from his tattoo begins to peel off his skin. When Heather found him, he was already dead, and when Kat came to check, she couldn't say what killed him, 
but Danlin showed up with Buzz's tooth. She was convinced that some kind of inorganic substance was detected in their bodies. In the control room, Fulmer noticed a light that was not coming from the bridge. He and Alwyn go outside to check it out, but Lars notices them and turns off the flashlight before they can catch him. He sneaks back into the building through the door they used and locks it, bumping into Heather in the process. Fulmer and Alwyn inspect the rowboat in case someone tries to escape, but Fulmer accidentally injures his hand. At that moment, mysteriously, the ash stop falling. Lars enters the control room and begins sending out an SOS signal with the lights, putting the ship into overdrive. Alwyn and Fulmer see the message and try to go back inside, but the door is locked so Alwyn looks for another entrance, but Fulmer keeps screaming. Heather hears him and gets Magnus to help open the door. When Fulmer mentions Lars, they rush to stop him, almost escaping into a fist fight, while Magnus tries to focus on sending a message to the ship to correct its course. Ask. Alwyn is now chasing a flashing light that leads to Baz, but Baz refuses to come back because he needs to see the aquatic life that started it all. It is said that there is Alwyn insisted on Buzz, grabbed Alwyn and made him squirt water from his mouth. Baz disembarks Alwyn and flees as Dunlin arrives to warn of an approaching wave due to the boat's diversion. Danlin drags Alwyn's body out of the water, and Magnus arrives to reanimate him, but it's too late. When Kat arrives, she confirms that Alwyn has somehow drowned. Rose continued to examine the ashes, and confirmed that there was a living creature inside by dripping blood. She goes to Magnus, who tells him that the ship was originally going to help another oil rig. Rose takes him and Kat to the office and explains that Ash has some kind of parasitic spore that seeks out a host and repairs its wounds quickly because it wants a healthy body. Avoid prolonged exposure to Ash and keep an eye on people with wounds. Magnus allows Rose to take blood samples from the entire crew to compare with Buzz's blood samples. In the cafeteria, Heather finds that the fog has finally cleared and the adjacent oil rig has been completely destroyed. Fulmer catches Baz watching Rose's research and tries to offer his help, but Baz refuses because the light needs him. Rose also arrives and sees that Buzz has taken his own blood sample. He runs away when she asks for help. Now that he has learned what happened, Magnus sends Kat to check on the wounded as he can no longer perform the test. After isolating Fulmer, Magnus calls another meeting. With the fog and ash gone, he wants half of the team to thoroughly sanitize the rig while the other half find Buzz. Rose investigated further and discovered that spores were found in strata prior to fossilization. They were supposed to die with the dinosaurs, but digging so deep brought their dormant nests back to life. Outside, Buzz dumps a blood sample into the ocean. His body is now fully healed, and he touches the tank to try it, immediately filling it with spores. He hides when he hears James looking for him, but when James sees the spore water and calls for help, Buzz has to shut him up. When Lars and Danlin enter the room, they find James lying on the floor, wounded. Lars notices that spores in the water are starting to grow plants. Heather, Easter, and March are also in the engine room and find plants growing on the oil. Suddenly, the rig starts shaking again and Danlin finds James bleeding. When the boy opened his hand, it was revealed that he was missing one tooth, meaning he had an infection. Frightened, James punches Dunlin and runs off. The drill begins to lose power again, so Magnus takes Fulmer out of isolation to fix the problem. Heather finds Buzz and chases him to a mud hole where Buzz grows plants here and there. Buzz told her to protect this place because her memories from millions of years ago were under attack, she explains. If he dies, everyone will perish with them. Suddenly, James also shows up for his participation in Buzz's activities. The rest of the team find Heather gone, and Lars comes to her rescue. Buzz and James flee before Heather gets her answer. Fulmer manages to restore power and the team finds the production module's torch has gone out. It must be unplugged to prevent an explosion, but the module's controls are in the mud and can become infected with spores. Her only option is to manually relight the torch, a risk Fulmer takes. Easter controls a crane to get Fulmer closer to the module, but that's not enough, so Fulmer unbuckles his harness and gets as close as possible for the actual shot. The torch was successfully lit again, but Fulmer was caught on fire and had to be taken to an infirmary to be treated for severe burns to his back. A mud pit deteriorates Buzz's vision, and he concludes that the oil rig system must be shut down to stop the attack. James attempts to close the valve, but the pipe is still pressurized and can explode, so he accesses the system through the source. Later, after a visit from Rose, Fulmer swears she's okay and she's changing because she wants to help. He, Rose, and Heather begin working on a study together, and Fulmer unknowingly draws some circles on the pad like Baz once did. Suddenly, Magnus calls everyone to the control room, where he discovers that the pressure is incredibly high as Baz tries to evade the well's safety. Fulmer can't take control away from him remotely, so you'll have to take your chances with the bull's eye ROV. Easter guided the ROV and acquired underwater images showing that the earthquake caused a series of circles on land reminiscent of Fulmer's paintings. The ROV cautiously approaches the pithead and closes it, enraging Buzz that the plan has failed. He tried to access the system directly from his CPU, but an alarm tripped there, so Fulmer had to disable it. Suddenly, a message arrives on Easter's phone, and the crew realizes that communication is possible again. Magnus tries to contact the Coast Guard, 
and Fulmer googles the meaning behind circles that seem to tell something. Rose searches her internal system for an unknown container that Heather found and discovers a project called Serene that she doesn't have access to. She also finds a painting of Fulmer. Kat called his wife, who said the company had told the family that the crew was safe and that there was an electrical problem. At that moment, fog reached the city and people on land had no electricity. The internet signal goes down and the guards do not receive a message from Magnus asking for help. Buzz uses the power of the spores to bond with Fulmer's body, allowing Fulmer to heal faster. Fulmer also started hearing Buzz's voice in his head, so he ran to the bathroom to check on the wound. Rose finds him missing and goes to check on him. Fulmer is startled when he briefly sees Buzz in her mirror. He confesses everything to Rose, who kisses him to comfort him. This causes Fulmer to see visions of her suffering and Buzz's appearance, and asks him to join him. Hours later, Rose checks on Fulmer again and finds a note he left behind. Rosa follows him and Kat joins her as well, and together they find Fulmer on their way to the quagmire. The girls also enter the hole and her spurs get closer to Kat, but she doesn't attack her because she's interested in the baby, instead circling around her belly. Rose drags Kat out before things get any worse and finds the crew excited by a series of lights approaching the oil rig. It's a ship from a neighboring oil rig. The crew accepts the survivors, and Rose meets Coke, who works in the company's research department, and demands that he be taken to the control room immediately. Kat ensures the other men are unharmed, but Easter is surprised to find her old lover Harish among them. Cook explained that the rig exploded after the loss of pressure and he believes restoring access to the production module should be a priority. Rose wants to know why Coke was sent to the oil rig, but he refuses to explain. In the infirmary, Harish tells a different story than Easter. When Mr. Coke arrived at the rig, he had to send a group of people home while the rest helped install the new equipment. They didn't extract the oil from the wells, they just pumped some. Then fog came and people started to disappear, but Coke kept his composure as if he had done the same thing before. He ignored the pressure warning and continued testing the device until it exploded. Heather entered the system to match the list of survivors with the crew's files, but Coke's name was not found. She tells Easter and Harish about it. Harish explains that Cork accessed the system using a temporary account her IT person created upon arrival. He deleted everything related to the test before they left the rig. Heather checks the system and Harish points out a strange name on the crew list that never existed before. There was an email telling the company that the pathogen had already spread, meaning Coke always knew and the company sent it on purpose. Kat saw Rose and thought the circle she was studying looked like a tree, and Rose realized her spores could be tracking time in this way. Gaps between rings mark her five major mass extinction events, implying that the last rings are present and rapidly closing to destroy them. Cork explains that's exactly what happened with his rig. The explosion was caused by an infected person opening a well and blowing it up. He wants to send a team to the production module, but Magnus refuses to take the risk, and Rose suspects that all these containers and tests are secret projects Irene. Fulmer ends up working with Baz and James, but points out that he has a clearer mind than his friends. Baz explains that it hasn't been exposed to the spores for a long time yet, but will soon be eaten away by the spores. If Fulmer agrees to work on the systems, Buzz can help Fulmer use them. Fulmer gets to work, but it takes a while before the alarm goes off. Dunlin, Lars, and March are fed up with Magnus' wrong decisions and want to hear Cork's thoughts, so they call Cork for a private meeting. Cork explains that Buzz can be stopped by using the carbon dioxide from the secret container to stun him. All you have to do is enter the mud pit and connect the carbon dioxide to the aeration system. The three pull the canister out of the trash, but Dunlin is suspicious because the label says carbon dioxide is mixed with something else. They carry the canister to the mud pit, connect it to the ventilation shaft and protect themselves with a mask. Buzz sends James and Fulmer to find out what's going on, and James is the first to spot the trio, but suddenly blood splatters all over their bodies. The boys realize that the carbon dioxide didn't make James pass out, it killed him and his plans. Because that was Coke's plan from the beginning. Lars and March flee, but Danlin joins them only when convinced he cannot save James. Fulmer tries to turn off the ventilator, but both he and Buzz pass out. After Lars and March escape, in the control room Kat finds Cork closing the door around the mud pit, trapping Danlin inside. Danlin's mask runs out of oxygen and he too dies. Heather and Harish tell Rose and Magnus about Cork and oppose him, but Cork defends his actions as a means of survival. Magnus opens the door, but the ventilation pit is inaccessible, so Rose goes there, removes the mask from Lars and enters the mud pit. She manually shuts off her ventilator to see if Fulmer doesn't wake up when Rose removes her mask. However, when she accidentally touches the plant, the spores react and Fulmer regains her consciousness. They escape from the pit together, but Buzz also wakes up and the final ring closes underwater. Magnus meets Harish and hears the truth. Cork pushed the test to the limit because he wanted to destroy Spore. The loss of the drill was just a side effect of survival. A ship comes to rescue them, but it crashes, so they break through the system and escape in a small lifeboat. I mean, let people die. Magnus then interrogates Cook, who explains that this is all company policy. Coke was sent to eradicate the spores because they didn't want to lose their precious oil reserves, they just wanted to drill non-stop. If we don't stop it now, 
it will spread all over the world. To survive, you must kill all the infected. Magnus discusses options with Rose, who believes killing the infected won't do anything. Rose intends to work with Fulmer to find alternatives. Perhaps, like Buzz, Fulmer could communicate with Spore and explain that they can work together instead of attacking each other. Inside the hole, Buzz felt the spores shut him out, and another earthquake shook the device. Fulmer uses a small plant to connect to Buzz and observes the spores trying to trigger the next big slip to clean up the ocean. Rhodes points out that the spores are living nests spread across the world's ocean floors, so attacking them here would do little harm. She speaks with Buzz and thinks that Buzz should be able to combine with them to stop the spores. Magnus would rather work with Cork to prevent it, but the others stand by Rose's theory and Magnus gives them permission to try. Magnus, Rose, and Fulmer enter a pit, where Magnus continues to see visions of his dead son. They found Buzz crying in a cloud of spores and said it was too late and they had failed. Cork searches for Harish and explains that a helicopter has already arrived and will bring Harish and his friends if they help him complete his mission. Harish suspects that Cook is going to blow up the facility to cover up everything, and secretly activates the microphone before forcing Cook to admit everything for everyone to hear. The earthquake gets worse and the whole building starts collapsing. Cork punches Harish out of the way and begins the countdown for the explosion. Then a helicopter finally makes contact with them. Cork runs to the heli deck to escape on his own, Cat and Heather give chase, while Easter helps Harish stop the impending explosion. On the heli deck, Cork finds Lars waiting to kill him in revenge, but the girls stop him in the nick of time. Harish appears and tells them that he stopped the explosion and everyone must prepare to evacuate, and Lars punches Cork before joining the crew. Rose notices that the spores are different in the hole and touches them. She manages to communicate with Spore, but before she can ask Spore to help humanity, the oil rig is hit by the worst earthquake ever and the boys drag her away. Buzz decides to stay to prove to Spore that humans can give to. Magnus, Rose, and Fulmer catch the last helicopter and fly off just before the tsunami hits the oil rig and collapses. At the same time, Buzz becomes one with Spore. Realizing that a tsunami is about to hit the shores, Cat tries to warn the townspeople, but the pilots push them away when Cork explains he won't be going home. At that moment, a tsunami hits the city, killing Cat's wife. Please subscribe and like.